yesterday's video I thought I would do like a compilation of like do like a drama and makeup memes compilation so let's just get into it so starting with Michaela Naguero she posted on her Instagram story whether she should change how she speaks in her TikToks sometimes she's like loud and shouty and sometimes she's more calm a few moments later Kayla did a post without paid partnership, she just tagged the brand. Allegedly, it was like with a microscope or something. Wait, you're telling me that that is what my skin looks like up close? Ew, that is disgusting. <laughs> I've seen what I needed to see. And by the way, did you know the face has 20,000 pores? That's 20,000 pores that you need to clean. I've had this makeup on for 12 plus hours. I'm ready to take it off. I'm gonna use the Rock Barrier Renew Gel to Foam Cleanser. Okay, I quickly removed my makeup. Now I'm gonna go in with the cleanser. This is gonna hydrate and balance your skin barrier. It has ceramides, glycerin, antioxidant green tea. It's gonna clean all 20,000 of those pores, okay? It lathers into a super nice foam. And if you're someone who has sensitive skin, this is super gentle. I like to wash the skin for at least 60 seconds and then I'll go ahead and rinse this off. I haven't even applied moisturizer yet, and my skin feels hydrated and plump. It's like night and day. The difference is crazy. It's so much cleaner. Up barrier new. Don't neglect the 20,000 pores on your face. She can't verbalize it. Like, this cleanser she loves. She wanted a road Hailey Bieber repost. She did a road cleanser dedicated TikTok. Not Hailey Bieber. Keep scrolling. Your new cleanser is so fucking good. The new Rode Pineapple Refresh Cleanser. Rode did repost them on their Instagram reels. There was so much hate when a brand reposts Michaela. Kayla posted on her Instagram story, this is her skincare routine like the product she uses. She said in the text, skincare routine is so on point recently, she tags Rode. Charlotte Tilbury, Dermalogica, Dolger Glow, Crave Beauty. These are the brands she wants us to see she's using. She wants to come across, this has saved my skin and my pores. How truly this is, I don't know. She puts a microscope over her skin when it's dirty. Uses the cleanser and it's not dirty anymore. Michaela posts on TikTok a review of another cleanser. I have spoken about Real skincare again and again and again and again. I have never been more consistent with a skincare product in my life. I have this on auto subscribe. Like I'm getting it sent to me every month. This completely transformed not just me, but also my husband's skin. He doesn't have acne anymore. I don't know if you noticed. She loves this cleanser too. Rare Miracle Cleanser. Does a video of the cleanser. What I'm gonna do is cleanse the face. The texture is just so creamy. The reason I like Real is it's good for sensitive skin. This has AHAs, BHAs, and PHAs, and triple hyaluronic acid. I'm gonna apply a layer of this to my skin and let it sit three to 10 minutes. Basically, this exfoliates, evens out your skin tone, and unclogs your pores. It's been about five minutes. I'm gonna rinse this off. Now I'm gonna go in with the complete acne serum. Salicylic acid, zinc, niacinamide, and this is just going to help further treat and unclog those pores, clear that acne. Feels so nice. It doesn't have any sensitivity. My skin's already glowing and looks super healthy and hydrated, but I'm just going to finish off with a little bit of moisturizer on top, and then I'm done with my routine. People under the new sponsorship said, do you not use Dermalogica anymore? We wonder whether she actually just uses products or likes them for a sponsorship. December 12th. 2023 about skincare routine the whole skincare routine was dermalogica my skin looks the best it has my whole life i have to remind you i will never let my skin get like this again never this is when i had no skincare routine at all and now i have found a consistent daily routine that i am so obsessed with so in love with it has done so much good for my skin so i'm going to show you the full routine and none of this is sponsored. It's not an ad. I buy all this shit myself. I say this every skincare video I do. I'm not an esthetician. I'm not a dermatologist. This is just what works for me. First, I'm going to remove all of my makeup. I use Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse. I apply this directly to dry skin. 
Basically, this is just gonna melt all of the makeup off. I rinsed that off with warm water and now I'm gonna use the Dermalogica Special Cleansing Gel. Gently massage this into slightly damp skin. Really work this into the skin for at least 60 seconds. Here's where it gets interesting. This is the Dermalogica Daily Microfoliant. This is basically a face polish. I'm gonna put this into my hand. Look at it, it's like a powder. I'm gonna add water to this and it's gonna turn into like a paste. It looks like this. And I'm gonna work this into the skin. Basically, this gives the skin a light exfoliation. Now you can do this daily, I don't. I do it every couple of days when I feel it's needed, when I feel I really need to exfoliate my skin, but it feels so nice. If you have acne, you have to try this. This changed my skin like crazy. And I also have Cody using it and his skin looks the best it ever has. It's called Oil La La, Oil La La from Crave Beauty. It has Le linoleic acid. I don't really know what this does, but it is crazy how this can clear your acne, especially if you have like a lot of acne. Like I've shown you Cody's skin. I am amazed at what this has done to his skin. So we use this every single day. I actually need to get a new bottle. Obviously my skin is red from applying all that skincare. Now I'm gonna go in with a Dermalogica Calm Water Gel. This is gonna calm that redness down. Um, and I like to use a lot of this. I almost use it like a mask. It's a super light gel, yet it feels like you've taken a drink of water. Okay, I'm gonna let my skin calm down for a couple minutes. Baby, look at this skin. Look at this skin. Oh my freaking God. Like, all I have now is like a little bit of hyperpigmentation that I'm working on. And anytime I get a blemish, I do not pick it. I immediately put a Hero Cosmetics Mighty Patch, immediately. Put this on, a blemish you get in right away, overnight, blemish will be gone. Yeah. Michaela also did a review of the Refine Mascara. She did false lash, she didn't lie, she used it on her lower lashes. What is the point of a mascara if you just on the bottom lashes? Like we want to see how it does on the top lashes as well. This is the strangest mascara I have ever seen. Look at that. Oh man, this brings back some bad memories in the bedroom. I don't even want to talk about it. This is a new mascara from Refai. It is called Lash Sculpt. It's supposed to be insanely perfect for your bottom lashes. I mean, I think it's pretty innovative. The wand itself actually looks like dry. Like it doesn't really look like there's much on it. Okay, let's see how user-friendly this thing is. So apparently, It'll just hug the bottom lashes, do a little shimmy, and then pull it down. Okay, it's it's given something. I'm just gonna do that same thing a couple times. Honestly, it feels extremely strange, but you can see it does something. Okay, I'm gonna go in for a third coat. Listen, I don't like this. I don't, just like I didn't like that shit in the bedroom, I don't like it. Listen, usually you wouldn't hear this coming out of my mouth, but this is too long. It's too long. It does give a pretty under eye lash effect, but to me, it just feels kind of uncomfortable to use. I don't, I, it's, it's kind of hard and it just, I don't know. I, it's not my, it's not for me. I just kind of- Moving on to Manny MUA, called out a small influencer. She reached out about reposting her video using Luna Beauty products. And Luna Beauty reposted her on Luna Beauty's Instagram. Gave her some credit, but didn't ask for permission. She asked to have it taken down. Manny was shocked. He did a TikTok talking about the situation, so here's his response. This video is for micro-influencers and micro-influencers only, and anyone trying to become a creator. Maybe I'll make this a series, unsolicited advice with Gunkle Manny. <laughs> Recently, I had this experience with my brand, and I thought it'd be really interesting to talk about this because I have one foot in each world. I'm a creator. I've been doing beauty content for 11 years. But I also have my own indie brand called Lunar Beauty, so I am on the CEO brand world as well. Recently, it came to my attention that my brand had reposted someone's reel onto our brand page on Instagram, and that creator was very unhappy about it. Which I can absolutely understand. I already told my social girl, I'm like, girl, you gotta ask people's permission to repost their stuff. That's a conversation I had internally. And now everything should be good. CEO of Lunar Beauty, man, he's like, absolutely. I took it down myself. I said, you know what? 
big misunderstanding, but creator Manny has a different opinion. So let me just say that a lot of this business is built on connections. And sometimes those connections mean more than a check or it will lead to a check, to a bag in some capacity. A lot of the times, a lot of indie brands cannot afford to sponsor or pay you for content a lot of the times, right? Like that's just the reality of life. They're smaller than indie. They don't have the huge budgets that a lot of the bigger brands do have. But them sharing you and getting your face out there when you're first starting out can be really, really beneficial. For example, this creator, she had less than 2,000 followers, right? Which is nothing to scoff at, you know? Like that's hard to get <laughs> in this economy. It's hard to get. You know, my brand package has over 400,000 followers. Sometimes it really is worth to get your face out there, get your content out there, get shown to a makeup audience to potentially grow from there. It really is about kind of picking your battles. You know what I'm saying? Like if a brand takes your content, puts it on TikTok, puts paid ad behind it, babe, battle. Okay, like that's crazy, that's insane. But if a brand reposts your post, gives you proper credit, you know, it's not a bad thing. It really isn't. Back then, when I was growing, when I was a micro creator, I would tag every brand under the sun because I wanted to be seen. I wanted my content to be out there. I wanted them to share me, to make connections, to repost me. Even now to this day, at the level that I'm at right now, if a brand reposted my post because I tagged them in it of a product I used, I wouldn't mind because that's okay to me because it's really about brand connection, brand awareness, having your face be out there to a audience that loves makeup. Even when Then Gabby did a TikTok on the situation. So here's her response. Recently came to my attention that my brand had reposted someone's reel onto our brand page. On Hi there, I am the micro-influencer that Manny's talking about in his reel. And to be exact, I have 1,413 followers on Instagram, and here I have like a thousand plus. So technically, I'm not a micro-influencer, I'm a nano-influencer. I'm the smallest of the smallest. I don't even like the title influencer. I like it more if you call me a content creator. And like Manny said, Lunar Beauty reposted me to their feed um, about two weeks ago. I've been following Manny since 2014, 2013, somewhere around there. So I've been a fan for a long time. I love his makeup. I love everything he puts out. His makeup is really, really nice. So I cannot complain about that. So how exciting that a brand that I love from a influencer that I've been following for such a long time they reposted my content. The only problem is that they did not ask for permission to repost it. What Manny didn't tell you is that I did try many, many times to reach out to the brand, have a conversation. I was not asking for payment right off the bat. That's not how it happened. I would have been happy to get reposted without compensation. I honestly am not here mainly to make money this is not something that i do for a living i really just wanted to have a conversation i've been tagging the brand for years um ever since manny came out with his brand i've been talking about it sharing about it um honestly the nude prison palette is one of my favorites all i truly wanted was a conversation simply a conversation i have been reposted by brands bigger than manny smaller than manny and they have all asked for permission i think that is a basic one-on-one -on -one social media etiquette but what made this truly bothersome was that after many attempts to reach out they left me on red I get that maybe you open a message and it gets lost in a mix and then you don't remember who you did not reply. It was a Friday, so I said, okay, let me give them the weekend. Maybe on Monday they'll get back to me. Um, they did not. And on top of that, what really was bothering me is that the post was made shoppable. Here in this video, he went on and talked about making connections, make relationships with the brands, but how can I make a connection with a brand that leaves me on red many, many times? The same person that is managing that social media account doesn't want to make a connection with the person. So how am I supposed to make a connection, a relationship with the brand when a social media 
person is not even having conversations. Moving on, Michaela kind of addresses Lashgate and how that was hard. I know I've been through some shit on the internet, and if you've stuck by me, I appreciate you. I That, like, thank you. Now that there's, like, the weight loss, the mental clarity, I'm now married, and marriage is fucking sick. Like, I am obsessed. But I'm truly in this new era. Like, I feel like the confidence I feel is not fake. Like, it's not a fake it till I make it attitude anymore. I actually feel like I deserve to feel confident. I've had so much fun experimenting with like hair and fashion and accessories. Is that something I never really did before? I, I kind of just was uncomfortable with it. Glamzilla, she recently opened PR packages. Over, exaggerated, overpacked PR packages. Beauty Blender sent hundreds of Glamzilla beauty blenders to her. The TikTok's cringy. There's so many beauty blender. There's so many. There's so many of them. Personally, I've never used a branded beauty blender. I've used my Real Techniques beauty blender. People commented, oh, I use my beauty blender dry and the creator and owner of beauty blender does not approve of that. Well, this is the greatest thing I've ever opened. Steph, Wetter is better, she says, because you're supposed to wet your beauty blender. This is what she sent me. <gasps> like, look at all these beauty blenders, but no, it's not just this. She sent me this. <laughs> oh, wait, it, it gets better. Each of them says beauty blender loves Glamzilla. No, literally, like, all of them, all of them have this on it. I'm very overwhelmed. I am very grateful. This is the biggest flex of all time. Also, I have a beauty blender drawer right there. Hold on, let me show you. I take beauty blender is the only sponge I use, literally. And <laughs> wetter is better. I hope you enjoy. Can we do a giveaway? We no. I okay. Let's do a giveaway. Leanne, please contact me in your team. We need to do something big. This is major thing. Cause like, I'm keeping this all for myself. Okay, we gotta do the giveaway with other beauty blenders. Okay, bye. Re please reach out. People commented it does well. She said she should do a beauty blender giveaway. Oh, send me more beauty blenders. Send her more. Like, to be honest. She did not need to keep all of those beauty blenders. Michaela saw this on her Instagram story and posted a TikTok about it. She received a PR package from Basma Beauty. Actually not. What am I looking at right now? What is this? Who sent this? Who sent this? I can't even open it. I'm too scared. I'm staring at it. I've been liking it for 10 minutes. Who is sending me this? <laughs> what is the occasion? I feel like I need to like sit for this. Oh my god, what is happening? What is happening? What is this? <laughs> it came with this very fancy envelope. Maybe there's a note inside. There's a certificate or something. This has to be a note. Dear Michaela, I can't thank you enough for your continued support. I am forever grateful. It's from Bosma Beauty, who I love, their new blushes and their foundation set. What is in this? Holy shit, what is this? Holy sh This is so generous. Like, I'm like, I'm, I'm in shock. Thank you. Holy sh I will, you will see me wear these literally tomorrow. She is really reviewed very favorably in the past. They sent her AC pair of Carter. They sent her a pair of Carter earrings. $5,000. Jacqueline Hill, moving on to Jacqueline Hill, she did a very weird underscore sponsorship with Poppy. Since I have drank alcohol, there are days and there are weeks such as this one where I can be redeemed. 
In times like this, I go to mocktails, okay? I've become the mocktail queen the last eight months. I love a mocktail. I have learned that although I do not want to put alcohol into my body anymore, I still love the act of drinking. I love having a pretty drink. I love having a garnish, okay? I love going to cocktail hour, and instead of drinking cocktails, I drink mocktails. Let me show you my new favorite mocktail, okay? I've only had it one time. I made it for myself, and I about passed out. It is so good. First things first, get yourself a pretty glass. That's how everyone knows it's mocktail hour in my home. It's the mocktail bell. Now I'm going to grab some blackberries. Tell me that these are not gorgeous. I'm gonna go with like one, two, three, four blackberries. Damn it! However much fresh mint, you really can't mess this up. That's the beauty of it. Now I'm gonna go in with half of a lime. Now we're just gonna muddle that. So all this is is blackberry, lime, and mint. Kyle Mush. Okay. I added in a bunch of ice because I'm just an icy girl. Okay. I'm an extra ice type of girl. And now the star of the show, this new wildberry poppy. Oh, I just threw that shit with a knife because we keep it classy around right here. It's that simple. Okay. Pinkies up. I genuinely feel like I'm drinking a cocktail. It is so good. It's so crispy. It's sweet. It's sour. It's refreshing. It's citrusy. Five stars. Allegedly, natural health. Every post has poppy partner. She never says it's sponsored. She posts a YouTube where she's struggling, talking about being a poppy partner. Talks about partnership, sponsorship, but doesn't share this is sponsored. Because I'm going to feel overwhelmed and extremely stimulated. I don't actually want to drink because I have bigger goals that does not involve alcohol. You know what I mean? So, we're going to go. I'm going to drink uh, Georgie, drink a little energy drink, drink a poppy, and uh, change my mood. We made it on the party bus. <laughs> we're ready, baby. Watermelon poppy to keep my going. Gosh, times have changed. I'm a new woman. So, Michaela finally addresses the TikTok ban. What's gonna happen to your career if TikTok gets banned? Well, I guess I'll be shit out of luck. No, seriously, I think when you choose to be an influencer, it's never like, oh, I'm gonna do this forever. This is like my end all be all career. It's definitely a career that requires a lot of future planning financially and just figuring out how you're going to maintain this for the long haul, which I've, I've done a very good job of and I'm unhappy about that. I think it's fair to say it would be devastating if TikTok got taken away. I've been doing this for four years as of this week and it's my dream job and I, I absolutely love what I do with my whole hat. Here's the thing, my passion isn't TikTok, right? My passion is to create, to create content, to teach makeup, to do beauty videos. And I can do that from any platform. I can go to Snapchat, YouTube, Instagram Reels. It would be a very weird transitional period, 100%, because I, I, my main platform is TikTok and I would have to navigate that, but that is something you're told from the beginning as an influencer, is that you need to be able to shift with the times. Behind the scenes right now, all the influencers that you love are preparing to shift if we need to. I am not naive. I am very aware that my main audience is on TikTok. I don't even have a Snapchat or a YouTube. I don't have a presence on many social media platforms aside from TikTok. So I am fully prepared to potentially be unsuccessful on these other platforms as a content creator. Won't be easy, but it'll be fun. It's like a fresh stat. Then comes the question, okay, so if it doesn't work out, then what? I feel extremely blessed that I've been able to do this career for four years. It, it all feels like a freaking dream and like a blip in the matrix, like is this even real? But I come from a family of hard work, entrepreneurs, and people who worked their ass off to be able to put food on the table and put clothes on me and like get me through school and everything. And I, I've never been afraid of hard work. Say I were to lose my career, what would I do? Well, there's a lot of things I wanna do. I'm only 25. I would love to go back to school. I would love to finish my master's degree. I got halfway through and then I blew up on TikTok and I didn't finish. I would absolutely finish. I would also love to go to esthetician school. I wasn't able to do that earlier in life and I would love to do that. This career is absolutely my dream, but I have other dreams too. I would absolutely love to open my own like beauty studio or spa one day. Plus there's always the opportunity to start a beauty brand of my own. You and I have talked about opening sober houses together. There's so much I could do with my life. I am so young. I'm sure I will accomplish some of those things. But for now, I'm here to stay. As long as TikTok is here, I'll be here. And this is my passion. I'll never give up on it. The what would happen if TikTok gets banned? Someone asked, 
YouTube is different from TikTok. YouTube is more disclosing sponsorships, TikTok, you don't need to disclose sponsorships. Well, Michaela posted a PR package video, she got 50 PR packages. Holy shit, 50 packages. This is one week's worth of PR packages. Christy, a TikTok influencer, leaks a ColourPop launch that is sent to NPR. Sorry that I'm not supposed to get these yet. These are from ColourPop and they're supposed to be one of those Tarte Maracuja lip or like Elf lip oil dupe. I'm kind of scared right now because I'm literally looking all over online. I don't see anything about these. I'm just so confused because I also got it in a bunch of shades and somebody sent it in this like weird foil packaging. If you know, you know ColourPop never come in there. But anyways, whatever the case is, I'm going to try the formula and hope that I'm not going to get in trouble. Michaela then tries the product. I am like 98% sure that I'm not supposed to get these yet. I'm really looking all over online. I don't see anything about these. Not Christy leaking ColourPop's launch. Oh my god, she literally leaked it. Like I got an email saying she leaked it. <laughs> Anyways, I'm excited about these. These look sick. These are the ColourPop So Juicy Plumpin' Lip Liners and Plumpin' Gloss Balms. So these are a dupe for the viral tat maracuja juicy lips but apparently these are actually better from what i've seen actually i'm more excited about these because these are plumping lip liners they're made with peppermint and ginger and they're supposed to plump your lips okay let's take off my current lip combo i love this packaging i'm gonna use shade love that all pops og lip liners are my absolute favorite oh very pigmented Oh wow, I actually feel the peppermint like right away. Oh, I didn't expect that. It's like immediate. That feels really nice. Like you feel, you absolutely feel the peppermint. It feels good though. For the gloss bomb, I'm gonna do shade vacay mode. Glamzilla recently did a touch of sponsorship. You think it's a review, paid partnership, tiny, when in the FTCA guidelines you need to verbalise it. Jeffree Star drags Michaela Nigger on TikTok about declining brand deals, comments shading Michaela on I'm not accepting brand deals, he claims he doesn't accept sponsorships, he drags her, invited her to do a collab, she declined, then he dragged her. So, moving more into the makeup news section, a makeup brand is closing down, Suvia Beauty, they have their coloured liners, their hydro liners, change the game for graphic liner, they're closing down their CEO, Shana Azad announced on their social platforms they're closing, Suvia Beauty. Hey everyone, my name's Shana Azad, if you know me, awesome, if you don't, uh, well, I have a very important announcement to make in this video. The time has now come for me to say goodbye. And Suva Beauty is going to be closing its doors. This chapter in my life has come to an end and I am so grateful, forever grateful, to everybody who has ever supported us. In the form of bankruptcy, a non-priority creditor, if you want more details about the form of bankruptcy, Go check out Jen Loves. She does so much detail on the former brand bankruptcy. JD Glow, they're going to close, be closing down and rename. I will put the post on screen. Every state has a law. Prop 65 is what California has chosen to regulate, which I will put up on the screen.
There are harmful chemicals and chemicals that are FDA approved. There are dangerous things. I will put a post on screen that you can read. Prop 65 requires California businesses with 10 or more employers to put a clear and reasonable warning on their products if they contain harmful chemicals. On the Prop 65 list, above allowed levels, companies should carefully respond to Prop 65 notice of violation as these can be costly in terms on to businesses. Every entirely inner supply chain may be responsible for violations of Prop 65, including manufacturers, producers, importers, suppliers, packages, or distributors of consumer products. Business whose products contain a chemical on the Prop 65 list above a safe, allowable threshold must either print a warning on their packaging or provide materials to their direct customers, such as retailers, to notify customers. The Brock 65 list contains chemicals that are known to cause cancer or reproductive toxicity. Businesses subject to Prop 69 requirements can avoid providing a warning if they are able to demonstrate that their chemicals are present in their products within allowable limits or alternative level of a chemical above the legal limit is not harmful, as evidenced by scientific study. A company with a higher than allowable levels of Prop 65 chemicals should clearly warn customers that their products may cause cancer, birth defects or other harm. Companies with nine or fewer employees do not need to comply with Prop 65. However, some retailers require Prop 65 compliance from all suppliers. Companies should closely examine their vendor agreements or retailer purchase orders for more information. Prop 65 is enforced through civil lawsuit brought by public enforcers or private individuals operating in the public interest. A party intending to sue for an alleged violation of Prop 65 must provide a 60-day notice to the Attorney General and to the alleged violator. This gives the Attorney General time to decide whether they want to file a lawsuit against the company based on this of notice. This also provides the defined with time to address violations and avoid any continuing penalties. If the Attorney General does not take any action within these 60 days, the private plantify can proceed with litigation. Notices are Reproductive, which means the company is not given an opportunity to fix past violations. Companies are not required to take any action when served with a 60 day notice. However, it is important to act quickly in response to Prop 65 complaints. Compliant companies found to be violating of Prop 65 can be assessed a penalty up to 25. $2,500 per day for each violation and may be required to pay. Some companies may want to immediately add Prop 65 warning labels to all their products sold in California without pursuing scientific study. Violations are costly and plaintiff may serve 60-day notice for the company's other products. Companies should carefully discuss this option with their Chief LLP Attorney before acting. Most cases of Prop 65 violations are settled out of court because of significant costs involving and because businesses must provide that no violation occurred. Additionally, most insurance policies do not cover the cost of Prop 65 litigations. Once a company is served with a lawsuit before a case is settled, it should consult with its attorney to see whether any defences can be applied. Some of these defences may include issues with the 60-day notice, problems with significant of merit in which the plantifer states that they have consulted within an expert and have reasonable 
belief that their claims have merit. Testing the levels of Prop 65 chemicals in the product. Warning language displayed on the product is proper, having fewer than 10 employees. A strong legal defence team can help the defendant secure more favourable settlements. Almost all Prop 65 cases settle out of court, therefore it is important to work with an experienced attorney that can devise good settlement strategies. Attorneys use the law and facts to address the weakness of Plantifor's case and reach a quick resolution. For help in understanding your company's Prop 65 risks or help addressing other legal complication issues, contact your trusted Chilf LLP attorney. So it's one where JG Glow, they products have above legal levels in some of their products of Prop 65 chemicals and they didn't put the warnings because they have fewer than 10 employees which makes them exempt and they can't afford to fight in court so Alter Beauty is not doing very well Alter Beauty's full year profit forecast fell below Wall Street's predictions due to higher supply chains costs and intensified promotions leading to 4.5% drop in its shares in extended trading. These challenges arise in consumers' way of inflation, cut back on discreditory spending on items such as cosmetics, hair care, impacting the company's efforts to stimulate sales through discount. The company has received its annual opening margin ex to 14.0 to 14.3% from the previous 15.0% reportedly in 2023 with its earnings per share forecast range between $26.20 to $27 below the analyst average expectation despite this alter beauty anticipates its financial 2024 revenue to slightly surpass analytics estimates, suggesting a complex financial scenario where renovo increases do not directly translate to profit growth. Odd Beauty announce reflects the ongoing retail challenge including loss from theft and product breakage, even its reports a 10% increase in quarterly revenue to $3.6 billion, exceeding expectations. The flocation in its stock price reaching a record high before declining at the close highlights investor concerns about the company's profit sustainability amidst accelerating costs and evolving customer expenditure patterns. So Selena Gomez is selling Rare Beauty. Selena Gomez has hired investors to help with consumer interest in Rare Beauty earlier this year. Rare Beauty has passed $400 million in net sales in 12 months ending in February. The only celebrity brand beating Rare Beauty is Rihanna's Fenty Beauty. Rare Quotes is flirting with options but stay quiet. Buyers have been knocking down the brand's door despite its association with a celebrity. The rumour is they are looking at two billion dollars plus as a price tag. In comparison Tom Ford Beauty was sold to Estee Lauder at 2.8 billion dollars. Other options include an IPO or a partnership with a private equity brand. Selena has 429 million followers on Instagram. So finally we have Elf Cosmetics. Has been doing amazing for a long time, doing really oh. CL Tarijmin rang the opening bell at New York Stock Exchange on March 18th. He got this on a case they were celebrating their 20th birthday. The second the stock price increased in 
1,500% in the last year, making the best performing stock in New York City Stock Exchange. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in another video. Bye.